All right, we're back. This is Angelo Darren, the driverpreneur with Ride Local. And Don is right behind me here. Uh, this is our weekly webinar. And today we have a lot of things to talk about that uh, we're really excited about. Uh, right now, what we're doing is uh, we're offering uh, lower fares for the Grand Rapids residents, people that are taking advantage of the rides. Uh, I'm kind of a, actually I'm amazed at how many people are really coming on and supporting Ride Local. Uh, we've added drivers on the platform. Uh, they're making more money. They're building their platform, their business base. And uh, I guess uh, tonight I'd like to talk a little bit about the excitement that I have because uh, us two being the owner of Ride Local, uh, we go out there every day with our boots on the ground. Maybe we don't uh, do eight hours a day in order to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. And that's getting the Grand Rapids residents to know about Ride Local, that it can be cheaper for them to take those rides. Uh, second of all, uh, matter of fact, this last past week, I had a customer, the writer, and she was saying that uh, she had a hard time with one of the other carriers in the top two, which I won't have to name them, but uh, she left her cell phone in the car and she never could retrieve it. She never really got it back. So uh, that's a problem when you're so far away, states away, and you can't uh, get a hold of anybody in a local area. Anyhow, Don, you want to chime in right here and uh, talk a little bit about your week? How's your week going with your boots on the ground, doing some driving? No, that's why I was a little bit late tonight. I'm, I apologize for that. Um, I was out, I had three ride local rides tonight, and I, uh, it's getting busier and busier for me. I have, right. I'm getting more and more scheduled appointments. All right, yeah, because I, I experienced that this week. Uh, a matter of fact, this week, more in every, like, a push to more writers. I think people are starting to understand that they are lower fares because that's really what writers really care about, right? Getting from A to B and maybe not having a lot of hassle. So some of the things I'm going to talk about tonight uh, has to deal with some of the things that we've experienced this week, but we've added, we kind of, we've added drivers, but we've kind of like not pushed to add drivers as well, because we know it takes X amount of riders in order to accomplish that. Uh, but this week it's been kind of interesting because I have literally seen, I would say a, a good four or five people this week on uh, anywhere from three, four or five times this week as a, as a driver. So I'm starting to develop that uh, relationship with writers. Uh, they're starting to re pretty much request uh, to make sure that we are paired together. So I'm realizing my platform is being built more by right, you know, by the fares of Ride Local, which we're getting 100% of the fares. Um, I've just so if everybody doesn't understand how it uh, transpires, we get 100% of fares as drivers. Uh, ride local takes a booking fare, uh, a fee which is actually paid by the rider. So generally, if you look at it, uh, if you see a fare on there, that amount you add two dollars to it, and that would be the booking fee. So if it's a five ninety nine trip, the uh, the rider actually paid seven ninety nine. It's generally like a ten dollars or uh, roughly a ten dollar trip for Uber or Lyft. So I'm uh, I'm seeing that writers are giving me feedback on that as far as it is cheaper for them to go ahead and use the ride local, and that's really what we're all about. Uh, some of the things that I uh, I had somebody write in uh, and talked about uh, one of the things we experienced is what if you have a, a a writer who accidentally doesn't put in the destination. Now some people can do it by mistake, but I think some people try to do it to try to uh, I guess game it. Uh, one thing that we have built into it, it doesn't matter where your destination is, as long as the app is active, that driver is active, you haven't finished a trip, uh, you can go to Timbuktu and you'll still get paid for your mileage and your minutes. So that's really what we built into it. We built a little bit more on the minute side and the reason why we did that because we know there are situations where you, as the driver, has to wait for a rider. And that isn't very profitable for you. You're not making a lot of money on 11 cents on some of the other platforms. So we've increased that on purpose 
to encourage riders to be more attentive when you pick them up. But in the same token, if they aren't, or you run in situations where, let's say, uh, traffic is a little bit uh, worse than what it is normally, you don't really have to worry about that because you're not losing money. You're making decent money even uh, on your minutes. So uh, we built that in there like that. So if you ever get, if you're driving and you ever get, because that was a question I was asked, if you ever get a problem where you drive, you pick somebody up, and you notice it's just a destination to pick them up and they didn't put a drop off destination keep the app running don't do anything to it you can quickly go into the google maps now that we're aware of this and we'll probably set something up in the future but for now you'll go into google maps get your destination as far as your mapping go there and then when you get there go back into our you know the uh, ride local app or pick me app uh, you go in back into them there and then you go ahead and finish that ride and clear it out and then you can rate the rider and so on. And then they can do the same and give you a tip on the other side as well. Uh, Don, do you want to uh, come in, maybe come up with a couple of suggestions you have or something you've experienced this week uh, doing your rides? Yeah, I have a regular com uh, customer that I take to bingo four times a week. Right. And I first stop it and then redo it. And I said, no, nope, I'll just sit here and wait for you. So I got, I was, she was in there for a good, probably 10 minutes. And then she comes back and she says, oh, I have to go to the gas station. So I had to take her clear over to the gas station. Again, I sat there and waited for, I made, what was it, $18 that day, just for that one sit, sitting at the uh, grocery store in the gas station. So it's, it's not bad money just sitting there. So that was nice. I was just pulling off, uh some of the questions that we had that came in uh, and that's uh, one of the things is that there was a market driver from Grand Rapids that asked how can I invite riders and make sure that I get them as a customer uh, one thing nice about the platform is once you have a rider and you're the driver that's matched you remain matched the only time that would change is if you were let's say you weren't active driving then it would go on to whoever's active on the driving platform. So we kind of share in that. Uh, I guess we it's kind of nice to have other drivers that can support us and help us right. uh, provide services to the customers that we have. So that's kind of nice that that happens. Uh, normally, uh, it doesn't happen a lot. Generally, you're just paired with that person because generally you, most people drive, have habits and they drive certain periods of times. And generally, the riders that you, I guess, develop relationship with and, and become part of your customer uh, they become customers of yours the way they do that is through relationships that you form but then also through the times that you do drive so I'll give an example if I, I drive in the morning and my my habit is to drive in the morning and get people to ride to work or airport rides I, or ordinarily people that I do pick up and I develop those relationships with are going to be people that are within those times. They generally, that's, you know, 99% of the time when they do take a ride share, they do it within those times. So that kind of locks you into it too, because it's really your habits, you match your habits with the rider's habits, and that's what develops your platform. A nice thing about it is you don't have to spend a lot of hours on it in order to develop that. And that's one thing that well we, we experience. I mean, right. we're, we're you know it's almost like we get excited when the ride local job comes in. Obviously, we uh, game it with other you know ride share companies and stuff in order to maintain us being active and busy. But we also do other things with it where we gauge I guess uh, the times where purges or prime time or hot spots are developed by our competitors because those times uh, we can take advantage of them as well as a company. And we've had our first round time table meeting with drivers. So we have made some changes and maybe there's some in the future as well. I'm sure there are, but that will be based on the, the collective group of drivers within our platform. Uh, I have another question on here that he asked is that Jennifer Driver from Grand Rapids asked, if a rider forgets to schedule a drop off destination, uh how can they add one you know so i mean I mean, that's a good question because it's happened to me before and uh the best way to do it is you know you don't have to really add it you can just take it and do the google maps thing and i think i talked a little bit about it i think it's the same type of situation mm -hmm. 
so all you have to do is go to your destination and then go back to your app. So you can go to the destination by Google Maps. Sometimes you get in there and the room you pick the writer up, you say, well, where are you heading to? They'll tell you. Uh, and then, you know, you can figure out that way. But you still get paid for the minutes and the miles. Uh, Brian, a driver in Granville asks, if a writer needs to stop at a store on the way to their drop off, how should I handle that? So he's talking about like Lyft, they have stops that you can actually plug in and Lyft charges the rider X amount of fees for this drop off or the stop. We don't have stops on our platform, uh, but we do have a way for a rider to do that. And uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about that, how that platform. Sure, um, all you have to do is just leave your, your app on and you just sit there and it'll just keep counting up the minutes you know so it just it'll just collectively add up the minutes while you're waiting for them it's really about it right and then if, if we get data as time goes on data uh proves that we should charge more or, or it'd be compensated maybe maybe because of the, of the length of time so a lot of times when i drop off a rider because we're talking about minutes i'm getting paid i'm getting paid better than if i was with uber or lyft but uh, I'll give an example. The other day, I helped a guy, uh, I picked him up at Myers, and I literally, on an Uber and Lyft platform, yeah, the first thing I seen was a basket full of uh, goodies, right? He went shopping. But I thought, let me be provide some service to this guy, because now ordinarily what would happen, either the Uber driver or the Lyft driver would turn around and say, hey, wait a minute, you know, we would have, I didn't know this was going on. You're going to have to get yourself another driver. And a lot of times that would happen. So then be inconvenienced for the customer. So I took advantage of it and helped him. Uh, come to find out, I even helped him, you know, uh, get the, the groceries into from, from my car into his house. And then he tipped me $20. So it was a $19 ride on a ride local platform, but he tipped me $20 as well. So, uh, I mean, that was a really good deal for me because it didn't really take me that much time to help them with the groceries, but I provided a service that ordinarily somebody else would. Right. You know, you and I have talked about that. Sometimes it's hard for the older folks to even know how to do it because they're not app-based, right? right? So how do they do it? All they know, they can barely hit the phone to make the phone number. Right. So that's something that we have thought about and talked about as far as opening it up and maybe uh, do it where we have live dispatch uh, dealing with the older folks, the ones that are not technical savvy. Uh, and we talked about, you know, maybe doing something for that. But that's something that we have uh, thought about. And we thought in order to open up our platform more is to provide that additional service that we needed. Uh, I do want to bring up a time on Saturday night. I did pick up a writer. And, uh, I picked her up, and when I picked her up, I picked her up over on College Avenue in Grand Rapids, and I noticed when I picked her up that she really was, I would say, not coherent, totally coherent. She was like a little, a little spaced out, and I was just watching her a little bit through the drive, and she wanted me to take her to the Twisted uh, Bowl, which is over on the southeast side of Grand Rapids. So I went ahead and took her on that end, but I'm noticing on the ride that she really is drunk. <laughs> to please, you know, because she really didn't have her have it together. So I stopped there, and after I stopped there, uh, I'm waiting for her to get out, and she's just sitting there. She's not moving. So I know, you know, so I said, ma'am, you know, uh, you know, do you need any help? Can I help you and stuff? And she says, no, no, I'm fine. And she kind of snapped out of it, and she was fine. And, uh, and I said, hey, if you have a problem tonight, you can't get home. I tell you what, go ahead and take this and download the app and I'll give it a ride. A person you make sure you get a ride home. So anyhow, I left, but I also had intentions that in case she did, because I knew she was kind of sauce. She had, I don't know if she had any drinks in there, but she even had one sip, that was it. You know, so I wanted to make sure that I was available. So all of a sudden, like 10 minutes after that, I'm uh, around the corner and I get, I get to pick, to pick her up and I see the address. I know it's from her. So I thought to myself, well, what the heck, you know? At first I kind of said, oh my God, what I had to open my big mouth for. But then I went over there and I picked her up. And then I seen the address of where she, you know, her, her, obviously where she resides at. And then I could get her back home, but I got her back home and then she did walk in by herself. But you could tell that she was tipsy. And my big thing is that I got her home 
I know it was a free ride. It was on my dime, but you know what I mean? It you help someone yeah, get home safe. I thought that was important. Yep, yep. So anyhow, uh, let's see. I, we did get a, Alicia is a rider from the Grand Rapids area. And she asked, how can I pre-schedule my rides with my flight times uh, with, the, with the Grand Rapids Airport, Gerald R. Ford Airport on the AM? Um, you want to talk how you how she can do that as far as pre-schedule? She, I guess she's talking about more or less like if, if her airport flight is at 7.30, okay, how can I coordinate my ride to my time I have to be at the airport? Because I guess they look at it, what, two hours? Or if she can get a booking pass all taken care of, it's an hour. Right, 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 right. All you have to do is just go on the app and put in, there's a little calendar in there. You just put in the days and times that you would like to be picked up and save it and send it and we'll take care of the rest for you. We have, we block it up on our calendars to make sure that everybody gets their rights on time. Yeah, and then right now, I mean, uh, we talked about it in the past, in the past webinar, but just because we talked about a past webinar does, doesn't ensure that everybody's listening to it tonight, listen to it previously. So I'd like to bring it up again uh, with when we had our uh, round table with the drivers. And maybe mm -hmm. you can talk about that a little bit, Don, as far as what, what, what was decided as far as, far as because we changed our platform. We did. All right. We did. If, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Well, instead of having the monthly fees that we were going to have, um, we talked to the drivers and they said that it would be a better idea if we took, what was it, um, 75, 25, something like that. They get 75%, we get 25. Well, we didn't want to do that. We want you guys to have your, your 100%. So what we did is we have a $99 setup fee and a $39.95 fee for your background check. And then we have booking fees. That's what you know. That helps pay for the apps and everything. Yeah, we like eliminated that. the setup fee. Right. The only thing that there is a thirty nine ninety five uh, background check. Oh, I misspoke. I'm sorry. Yeah, because we, <laughs> what we did is we put it into the booking fee, and that's what we did. We took a booking fee, so we took the fare, which was my all. I mean, all fares are based on miles and minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And then from after we did that, we took the fares. And we decided we put it in a kind of like a pay as you go, but kind of like rider pay as you go. Right. And uh, that's why the $2 booking fee is on each ride. You add the $2 <laughs> to it and uh, whatever the fare, the minute and time is, would be their their, their fare. And uh, it's it roughly it equates to a minimal amount of making for a driver would be $40 an hour. I've made as far as uh, 65 depending on the trips. Yep. Uh, but uh, you can guarantee $40 an hour. I know when I drive with Uber and Lyft, uh, and let's say I don't have any ride local jobs, or I, the tips aren't really great, uh, I, I press to do the $20, especially if I drive more like in the afternoon. I mean, depending on the periods of time, obviously when you got the surges and the prime time, you can make more money and then you're hitting your 20 and $30 an hour. Right. But the one thing nice about ride local, you don't need to rely on that. You rely on the regular fares. Right. And I'll give you an example. Right now for the drivers, you, we're paying out 85 cents a, a mile. That's pretty good. Uh, I'll give you an example of how good that is, is right now Uber pays out 61 cents to drivers. We pay 85. And as far as the time, they pay out 11 cents. The driver or the rider pays 19 on Uber, but we pay out 25 to the driver. Right. So because of the 100% fares, our, our rates are higher, it enables us to do that. And the $2 rider booking fee actually gives us for the development of the app right mm -hmm. to develop our app and give them and get our app out there as well as our company now the, there is credit card processing fees because we have to uh, we've set it up with the writer we have a company called plaid that goes in there and determines whether a writer if they're going to take a ride rather than well, whether they have enough money that's good enough to take that ride so let's say if that ride was calculated six bucks then it's going to see whether your credit card information is enough where you can accept a $6 charge. If you can't, it's going to kick the ride out. And that's when you maybe a driver seen that, where a ride came through and you looked at it, you accepted it, but then all of a sudden it went away. Right. Yep. That's when it goes away is when it doesn't uh, suffice on the credit end of it. 
And then the other part of it is that money is going to be transferred directly into your the driver's account. Right. And uh, that's the benefit of it. Uh, the benefit is that we handle all the processing of that. So all the charges are backed on, um, obviously done with the driver because we don't handle cash. It's all credit card processing, but that's really uh, the only kind of expenses that we have. We cover our expenses and the app or the bookie fee enables us to grow as a company. As well. But as far as the driver fees, even us, when we go out and drive, what do we make? We make driver 100% of fares yep. process. <clears throat> not, only, <clears throat> not only for us to get used to it, but if we do it, then we can know how the platform works for us. If it can work for us, then it can work for other people. And that's really how we built it. It's based on trial and error. We have made some changes over time. Uh, and we're probably going to make more. And the reason being is because time and technology is evolving. As it evolved, we want to evolve. So uh, that situation where someone can't put like a destination after they've started the ride, let's say they didn't put their destination in, we are, that is something we are working on as a company. The one thing about Ride Local, when we first started, we decided we wanted to do the app development. So uh, we got the we got the coders together and we said, okay, we're going to do the app development. But that didn't work for us. And then all of a sudden a light went on. I mean, we were going through all these bugs and these problems and these months, a light went on and said, hey, Concentrate on what? Developing service, operational service to the customer, but allow a company to concentrate on what they do best, which would be technology. Do what you know. So that's what we did is partnered with a company in order to provide that. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a third party app and we're in the process right now of branding it and also changing some of the functionality so we can provide a better service not only to the writer, because obviously that's a customer, but also to the driver as well. Uh, and that's really our intent uh, to do it and to bring it forward. So really our slogan right now, we've talked about around the office is lower fares and higher pay. So lower fares for the rider and higher pay for the drivers. And that's really what we want to be known about. The platform is built not only for Grand Rapids, but also with Grand Rapids residents and to make sure we built this for them. So all the money that we have spent on a fare about spending ten dollars right. as a writer, that all that money staying right here in Grand Rapids, feeding and families. That's huge. That's right? huge. I yes. think it is. Yes. I think it's a big deal, especially yeah. when I was driving Hoover and Lyft, and I'm not a a road warrior. So when I drive, I want to maximize my time. Right. I'm not the type that likes to sit around. So if right. I'm going to drive, I'm going to make sure I'm busy. So when I'm out there doing it, I'm doing it in shorter periods of time than maybe somebody that has to do it more for a living, right? So, but when I do it, I also see exactly what happens and what people have to deal with. Uh, and I'm talking about the driver and I'm also talking about when I make $300 for the week because I drove, I don't know, 18 hours, 19, 20 hours. And I made $300 for the week. I was thinking about that. I thought, man, that ain't bad for me. Right. But really, because I'm not used to making any more than that. But then when I realized that 300 just cut it in half, man, because 300 just went out to California. Right. So, uh, I would have much rather gone to another driver, another rider within our community than have a go to California. Uh, right. That's kind of just uh, idiotic to me. And I do, I do take that all heartily about supporting the people in Grand Rapids, because if we can do that, then we can build us. us. And then uh, I talked about us putting Ride Local or Grand Rapids on the map with a platform like Ride Local. It literally could, because it could really make a statement saying, "Hey." You know, when we make our money here, we support our residents here, and through it, our dollars stay here in order to enrich ourselves, enrich our lives of our residents. And that's exactly what Ride Local was about. It started out with the driver, and then it started out with problems with riders, and that's really how we built the platform. Uh, if you have any comments as far as uh, uh, and what we talked about tonight, or maybe you have a question, or maybe a suggestion, because suggestions is really how we got to where we are today. Uh, by suggestions of everybody, whether they be people within the industry, they have been in the industry a lot longer than we have, but in the same token, people that have been in the grump, uh, the bumps and grinds, uh, just try to make and carve out an income. And the writer, because there is another part to that where the writer uh, is paying a lot higher fares than what they really need right. to pay. Uh, and we don't have the overhead. We're not into AI cars. Uh, I mean, we're not doing all the extra side investment. 
Uh, one reason we don't have the money. Second reason is because we want to concentrate on one thing at a time. <laughs> Did I tell you that we heard from Lori the other day out in Arizona? Oh, what'd she say? Oh, she's been going back and forth from Yuma to Those the airport airports. Rides. Yeah. Right. She made, what would she say, $1,200 in a day and a half? Right, right. So it's crazy. Made, and this is kind of, a lot of people don't know about it, but some people do. Uh, went out to Arizona, looked at the game talk to the officials there, talk to the drivers that were out there and say in the residence, because that was important and knew that there was lacking one thing when that was that airport ride from Yuma to Phoenix and from Phoenix to Yuma, because if people can fly into Phoenix, they can save themselves some money, even, even when it comes to travel. So we opened up that platform to get them and to take dogs and stuff because Uber and Lyft weren't doing that. So now we're taking animals and we're taking them from Uyuma, we take them to the Phoenix for the airport and we're, we're helping people out. We found out through the residents throughout there, whether they be snowbirds or, or a permanent residents, um, we found out through them that there was a need of that. And uh, when we found that out, that's when we decided to open up the game plan Let's go ahead and go for it. Let's see what we can, uh, what kind of, what what can we do to level the playing field? And so we right. did that. We've been successful up to this point. We are a company that doesn't need to grow overnight. So, I mean, we, we said that when we started this. Mm -hmm. So it's really one city at a time. It's whether what one city we decide to do and get into it. But not only do we, um, I want to talk a little bit about our marketing program because I really don't talk a lot about that. Our marketing program has always been set up to create writers. Uh, and that's really to let the writers know about it, the lower fares of Ride Local, let them try it with a free ride, and then try it after that because of the experience. Right. Because I have made uh, a lot of uh, relationships with a lot of writers that have literally said something about the vehicles. Uh, we don't have economy vehicles, they're comfort vehicles, although our pricing is like economy. But our car vehicles, it's important for us to have a clean vehicle, right? Mm -hmm. And also a well-kept one. And one that's running real well. We don't like to have jalopies or something that someone would be afraid of, afraid of getting into. So anyhow, right now, we we're, our marketing efforts are done a lot on uh, the establishing riders. Mm -hmm. Although we do get some drivers that have been signing up and we've been meeting some of them and putting them on on a slower rate mainly to make sure that they're busy on a nightly basis. I mean, if they want to go out and drive, at least they're busy and they can experience some of the fares that they get from Ride Local. Because once you experience it, that's where when it starts being life-changing. Right. Right? Because, I mean, I talked about it and I get one and that was fine. But when you really experience the difference and then you start comparing it, that's when you really know. So a lot of it we're doing in the marketing is drivers, our boots on the ground as well. So the, a lot of it's within the platform. Uh, we do have iPads in some of the cars and stuff. And with the iPads, uh, we do have the free ride. So they have an option uh, to either uh, know about Ride Local just by looking at it. And then if they decide to uh, download it, that's entirely up to them. We're not pushy on it. We're not trying to tell them to cancel their ride and go with Ride Local type of thing. It's more of a suggestion based on the free ride and a suggestion on lower fares. Um, that's pretty much it on the marketing. Is there anything else you want to talk about? I mean, I know we do a lot of massive SEO. We do a lot of uh, social media, and you'll see us a lot at doing a lot of that. Uh, passing out cards. Right. Right now, we're doing some changes within our company, which is going to open up and free us up more to do a little bit more boots on the ground with the right local platform. Uh, we have some plans, marketing plans for the future in order to get into other cities because we've had requests in, in uh, Florida, I mean, obviously in San Diego area, we have had requests in uh, Arizona, obviously we're in there as far as the Yuma area, but also south or north of that, and then also uh, Montana. And so we want to go into some of these cities, but we want to be careful how we grow and in the manner in which we grow. So a lot of it might be just going there, visiting the cities, and then asking some questions in order to gather some data, and then doing it based on that, on the interests of not only the drivers, but also the writers. Because it really takes both sides in order to build this. Yep. Uh, you have anything else to put in for, or to say tonight? I'm just, I'm looking forward to the road trips all over the United States. <laughs> <laughs> kind of nice. 
be kind of nice. And I always said to pick out where you like to go because right. that's where we can go. But anyhow, <laughs> that's a unique thing about Ride Local is that uh, one day we will be in your neighborhood. One day we will be a staple in your neighborhood to help you build your community as well. So watch us in Grand Rapids, watch us grow. In March, we open to Detroit. Uh, and hopefully, maybe at the end of the year, we'll, we'll, we'll announce another city that we have had some interest okay. in. All right, so anyhow, everybody have a good night. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, comment on the bottom and then ask a question and that we'll get back with you. Another way is contact us at support at ridelocalgr.com. Uh, you can look at our website at www.ridelocalgr.com and you do not have to be a writer to be an influencer. So we ask anybody, if you download the Rider app, you don't want to take a ride, that's fine. Go into your promo section, get on there and share it with your friends. And it will enable you to go into their email or their text message, and that way you can share it and they'll get a free ride with a, a, to try out Ride Local. And then you, as a person, as an influence, will get $5 for everybody that signs up as a writer. All right, I thank you very much for tuning in again, and I welcome everybody for your questions, your comments, and I'll see everybody at the top. Have a good night. Good night.